of Torah. Uh -huh. Welcome to Torah Talk, a Torah Institute podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> How are you, mate? Oh, I'm just waking up. Just waking up. <laughs> See, look, I've got my radio up. Yeah, yeah. Ready for that. That time of the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I've been up just a little over an hour. And yeah. uh, I was looking at uh, <clears throat> I was looking at Psalm 1 this morning. Yes. And I was thinking, it'd be so great if we could read that, you know. Go for just it. Just to the viewers. Yeah. I'd like to read uh, Psalm 1, and I want to see what pops out, because, you know, in the last days, I think it's Second Peter chapter 3, where uh, he's talking about mockers, which is exactly the same thing as a scoffer. Yes. You know, people they go, oh, yeah, right, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, Psalm 1 talks about scoffers, yes. and what they're scoffing is the Torah of Yahuwah, and we find that, we, we try to be kind to them, but uh, Psalm 1 starts out like this. Happy is the man who shall not walk in the counsel of the wrong, and shall not stand in the path of sinners, and shall not sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah, and he meditates in his Torah day and night. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. The wrong are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wrong shall not rise in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahuwah knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wrong comes to naught. Mm. That's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Mm. Brothers and sisters, welcome to this uh, morning, evening for me, another Torah Talk, episode 7, I think we're up to now, and uh, that was Psalm 1, you just heard, Brother Lou reading Psalm 1, and uh, that's amazing. Yes. Mm. Like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, we... Uh we get a lot of resistance about that from a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters, but our eyes were just like theirs. We only saw what we were inoculated and brainwashed to see. Yeah. But when we obey the commandments, mm -hmm. then we suddenly depart from the denominations. Every one of them is uh, yeah. you know, trapped yeah. in a different path through the cornfield or the wheat field. Yeah. And it's just a matter of mm -hmm. breaking free and overcoming the, the doctrines of men, yeah. and then when we start listening to Yahuwah and taking his guidance, then suddenly we're very different from all the other denominations, all the other believers. Mm. But not that we're better, it's just that we see things as they really are, mm. and they're not, you know, being blinded by uh, some man that thought something about a, a particular commandment. But uh, we meditate in the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> when we have the seminars, it might seem that we're redundant, and, uh, and, and, and a lot of people that attend every time, every month, they hear the reading of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. But uh, that's the most important part of it for me. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because there's always new people there, and that's yeah. really exciting. Even for the people that do it, I don't care how old you are, if you meditate in his Torah, Whenever you come together and rise up, lie down, you know, whatever, then you have something that you know you're doing that he really appreciates and he likes and he wants to see his children doing. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And when he sees that, you feel it. You know, he's yeah. letting you know, you know, this is wonderful. Is that, that may be the first time some of those people have heard the unpolluted, real version of the, the marriage covenant, wouldn't it, for a lot of them? Yeah, the Catholics have a different order entirely. Mm. When they wiped out the second commandment, you do not bow to images, mm. then, you know, they just wiped it out. And they moved uh, down to the tenth commandment and made it into two commandments in order to still have ten. Mm. And most Catholics don't have any idea that was done, yeah. you know. Wow. And how did your seminar go on the weekend? Oh, thank you for asking. I thought it was very, very good. We had a little scare, though. Yeah. Just at the end, of it, Adam came up. Who, he, he was taping it and recording the sound. And he unplugged the microphone before he finished the program. And he thought he lost it all. But he worked with it for about three or four hours. Yeah. And, yeah. and he was able to recover the audio. Yeah. Which he's done a very good job with. So sorry, sorry everybody. Sit down. We're going to record the whole thing again. <laughs> yeah. It went. I thought it went really well. It was about our beloved brother Paul. Yeah. And it's going to upset a lot of the people that want to throw a Paul under the bus. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I saw Paul as the beginning for my understandings for how I should either stay or how I should how I should go. Uh, he illuminated a lot of the details about how to walk, you know. So he w- he wasn't giving us new commandments, but he illuminated the path. Mm. Wow. And for others, it disturbs them, and they get off the path because they misunderstand Paul. Yeah. They think that he's talking about the law, and all he's really saying, you know, is when the law came to is coming to an end, yeah. or is fading away. Mm. He's talking mm. about the priesthood. It's not even the word law is not even there. Yeah. Or he's talking about the ceremonial law yeah. that the priesthood had to implement mm. and that was coming to an end. Yeah. And yeah. it certainly wasn't uh, it, it was the, the the Torah is the goal. Mm. You know. A lot of people don't realize that Yahushua kept all the commandments. And right. He did, he came and he said I, I did not come to abolish one, what did he say, I didn't come to, you know. I did, did not even think that I came to abolish the Torah. Yeah. I didn't to abolish, but to mm. fulfill, which means to fill up, yeah. to complete, to yeah. make it more severe. Mm. And then he went and said, you know, even a person that looks at a woman mm. with lust mm. is, is already committed to sin. Yeah. And, and yeah. sin begins in the heart. And Paul explained it even further mm. by saying that, uh, when sin begins, it's in the heart, and, mm. and when it's fully grown, that's when you know it's it's outside the body. But the sin starts in the heart. That's where it begins. There's a scripture that says, uh, "I say this." Isn't there a scripture? That, <laughs> there's a scripture that says something about you should uh, look upon all women like they're your sister. Isn't isn't there a sis- uh, scripture that says that? Unless, yeah, that's unless, Paul. unless you marry one, of course. But I mean. Isn't there? There's yeah. That's Paul again. Paul again. He was teaching us how to have relationships with one another, mm. how to treat older people, and how to treat younger people, yeah. and how men and women should treat one another mm. uh, as sisters and brothers. Well, that's uh, sincere love. Well, that ties into what we were talking about last week. Because if you're treating all and looking upon all women like they're your sister, you, that changes your way you look at a lot of things, doesn't it? Or, or as mothers and fathers, Mother, yeah. Uh, if, uh, yeah, because you become um, in a relationship like a father or a mother. Yeah. So that uh, respect is carried over into that. Yeah. In the in this uh, world today that we live in, there's a lot of lack of respect for people. Ooh, People's yeah. language. Uh, when you're in the room with someone and you're talking to them and you hear someone using these colorful metaphors or yeah. uh, Things that are not really quite acceptable for you know company that you keep with, uh, especially opposite sex, yeah. and they're they're flowering up their conversation. Yeah. Uh, that's mm-hmm. a sign that they have no respect for the people that are in their presence. Mm-hmm. And the way that we dress, the way we dress, is another indicator of 
See, everyone is so casual today that they're virtually running around in their underwear. Yes, yes. And showing their underwear a lot of times, you know, they'll actually uh, have their underwear sticking out of their pants. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Uh, what's happened? Yeah. yeah. Going back it's to the, what's about the language when you're saying there's no respect and it's a lot of the time inappropriate. Um, putting aside, you know, sexual innuendo or things like that, where would you draw the line on on what your standard of bad language would be? Like I, I've, like I've had somebody on YouTube. I don't even remember the episode, but someone said you used the word hell. <laughs> you can't say hell, you know. And I thought, okay, well that's that's a new one. That's good. Good to know that. Because uh, I'm <laughs> sure you've said far worse before. Uh, but uh, Probably. yeah. And so, where would you stand? I know you shouldn't offend. If you consciously know somebody will be offended, I know you shouldn't say things to offend them. But as far as your relationship with Yahushua goes, if there's nothing to do with sexual innuendo or perverseness, where would you draw the line to what you would consider bad language to be? And there is a scripture that says all words should be pure and wholesome. But I mean, if you're having a joke with your son or your wife, or you know, you know, what what would you consider swearing? To, I'm not saying you should swear. I'm just saying what would you consider swearing to be? You know, well, if, if certain select words uh, are inappropriate no matter when they're used, and, yeah. and they're not even going to go through your mind yes. because they're just of the world. The world yes. is not supposed to pollute <laughs> and dirty our, up our yeah. our inner vessels, yeah. and uh, yeah. it really would come out of the treasures of our heart if we were to be in a yeah. situation. <laughs> but uh, yeah. we, the good treasure is what we should always draw on, yeah. not the treasure. You know, yeah. now. The uh, word, for example, if we were to analyze the word hell, mm. the word hell is an old English word that means a hole. A hole. That's all it is. Uh, where's, where's Uncle Charlie? Mm. Oh, the last time I saw him, he was still in that hell. He was in that hell. Yeah. It's a word. It's a pronunciation. Yeah. But when Scripture talks about uh, that in translation, we understand it as, as Sheol, and mm. that's the grain. Yeah. It's a, they're literally in a hole, you mm -hmm. know, usually, either a cave or under the earth. But yeah. uh, that's, your, that's a state of the dead. And, of course, the lake of fire is another completely different place. Yeah. But no one's in the lake of fire that we know of scripturally yeah. yet, because the first to go in is given to us in Revelation, and that's the false prophet and the beast. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, how... Uh, a system can go into, uh, you know, a, a methodology or a pattern can be thrown into the lake of fire, yeah. unless it's just completely a, a complete eradication of, mm. of the beast system. Yeah. Because the fourth beast is coming to an end at Yahushua's coming, mm. <clears throat> the beast. Yeah. So, and then the false prophet. So, uh, as far as we know, those are the only two that are going to go into the lake of fire first as as at his coming and then at the end of the of the uh, millennium there'll be uh, people thrown into the lake of fire after they've received immortality and then they'll be destroyed uh, because they'll be raised and then thrown away if their book if their name is not in the book uh, that the, their name has to be written in the book and then of course the the adversary the dragon is thrown in at that time as well at the end with all of his uh, one third of the of the hosts of heaven, yeah. you know, Malachi. So that's pretty clear. There's uh, there's judge. That's you know, yeah. I guess a judgment day, the great white throne judgment. You know, mm -hmm. so we uh, don't have a judgment day until at the end of the millennium. Really, yeah. the first or the first rays and the first resurrection, as we studied, would come <laughs> from those of the first fruits. Mm -hmm. That's why they're called the first fruits, because oh, yes. they're the first to resurrect. Yeah. So, anyway, back to the words again. Yeah. The word hell is, of course, one word that some people are just seared in their minds. Mm -hmm. That If that word is used in a sentence, mm -hmm. then it's automatically dismissed mm -hmm. and as an evil thing. Yeah. But uh, it isn't really. Yeah. Uh, but now, if you said Sheol, they wouldn't be offended. You know, yeah, that's right. <laughs> or, if you said, or if you said, 
go to show or go to <laughs> Go no, to you show. Yeah. You don't yeah. say that. Yeah, but that's right. If you say Yav Esh, Yav Esh <clears throat> is the word lake, fire, yeah. the lake of fire, Yav Esh. Yeah. And that would be a bad thing to recommend people to go to, too. Mm. But Because uh, when I was growing up in our home, yeah. you know, we, we were never allowed to say, you know, like, shut up. You know, we were never allowed to say that. And now that's... Sorry. That's just that's just part of everyday language, you know. Now that you wouldn't call that swearing these days, and that's just something that's, you know, it's times change and and people accept things, don't they, as being part of normal language. Yes, and I think that it all comes down to a person having a res having respect for everyone in their presence at all mm -hmm. times, young or old, male or female, just having sincere respect for them and being careful what you say. My father, for example, was a wonderful teacher. Uh, he he didn't teach for a profession, but he taught us mm. how to behave. Mm. And he wouldn't even let us use words like the word stuff. You know, if a, a, we couldn't use that because it wasn't specific and it yeah. and it could be uh, it could be condescending. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You can't say what, you've got to say pardon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very nice. That was my grandmother. Yeah. Should say that. Thanks well, you know the difference—the difference between <clears throat> the righteous and the unrighteous—is <clears throat> going to be an ever-widening path as we progress towards the end. Yeah. And we're getting closer yeah. and closer all the time. Yeah. You know that email I sent you of all the catastrophes that happened just during the Roman year of 2011. Yes. There's just incredible the de the, the deaths of birds and fish. And those are two creatures that you have blessed during the first week. That's and of course, the, the sign yeah. is, mm. if you follow mm. the logic, the, the death of birds and fish, which he blessed, the only other thing that he blessed that week were mankind and the day of the Sabbath. So, wow. what's coming, you know? Yeah. Mankind is the next thing to get whacked, wow. you know? That clip was amazing. I put that on our um, YouTube page as, uh, when you first click on. Mm -hmm. I worked out how to put clips on that weren't ours. So yeah, it's just amazing. It is. What to just it? see what's happening. A lot of that stuff has happened here in the United States. It's, yeah. What happened to Japan is just an, uh, incredible. Yeah. When you're talking about hell, um, why do you think in the scripture, because if you try to tell somebody, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, heaven or hell, um, they'll say, oh, there's hell all the way through the scripture. And even if it's Yom, Esh, or what were those other words you were saying? Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yom, Yom, Lake of Fire, yeah. Why would he use those, those words when, in reality, at the end, it's going to be kind of destruction and annihilation, isn't it? It's not going to be eternal weeping and gnashing of teeth, is it? Why would he use all that analogy when it should just be kind of like he's going to destroy them? Well, when he speaks, yeah, he can destroy us that way, uh, just erase us, yeah. you know. But uh, Sheol is a general term for the waiting period what, what, between the time that we die and we're raised. Okay. And that's what that is. And the person that's in Sheol or that place or... It's not so much a place, it's a condition. Yeah. It's uh, a matter of time doesn't pass. So a person that died 3,000 years ago wouldn't know any more time had passed than someone that died an hour before. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Or they both woke up, they fell asleep, they went back up, mm. and no time has passed to them. They just, they're all there. And, you know, so, um, but uh, hell or as we understand it, uh, Yom Ash, the Lake of Fire. Mm. Uh, well, you have to dis really, you have to really differentiate between those because Sheol is is the is the state of the dead, mm. and that's referred to by the English word hell, mm. hole. That's and then the, the same thing is referred. The same word refers to the Lake of Fire, yeah. which is inaccurate. It's really inaccurate. Mm. Uh, the Greek, I think, uses the word Gehenna. Yeah, you know, yeah. just in case somebody. If you're real impressed with Greek, but uh, I avoid Greek <laughs> yeah. as much as I can. Yeah. In fact, my interest of mm -hmm. Greek is massive mm -hmm. because I've had this 
this uh, aversion to it because of the fact that when I found out that I'd been deceived, yeah. and Greek was the language of the New Testament, as they say. Yes. I said, well, but I don't want it. <laughs> you know, I just, I do know a lot of Greek, but yeah. it's uh, not something that I'm not fond of it, like I am the Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of Greek words became Latin words, mm. and I'm not fond of Latin either. That's the language of executioners of our master. Yes. But uh, he had to, he had to die. I know that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You know, and he prayed for those men that did it. Mm. You know. Yeah. So who am I to judge anyone that he prayed for? You know. Mm. But yeah. uh, I, I'm not going to be happy with. Uh, I can't say that I feel fondness for the Latin language. Yeah. And I was trained in Latin, too, coming from a Catholic background. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah trained, in Latin, <laughs> trained in Latin. <laughs> I still have all these Latin uh, prayers that I can recite precisely wow. and I, because I was programmed with it, you know, as a, an altar boy. I, w I was serving as an altar boy. Wow. Uh, sometimes the priest was so sleepy or high on something. <laughs> yeah, I could do a better job, you know, than, than he could. <laughs> Bells and smells and smoke and, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But uh, I saw a lot of uh, ritual and a lot of liturgy, uh, yeah. which both were error, you know. Yeah. Yeah, see, I've never even been into a Catholic uh, service. I think I've only been in one in my whole life because we were, we were, I was brought up in the Anglican circus and then, Went kind of Pentecostalish, so really? uh, yeah. The the and of course Catholics and Christians don't mix. You know they think they're totally different. Whereas we look at it now and go, it's kind of the same. You know, uh, <laughs> it's well, kind of, it yeah. that. Yeah, there's a, a different liturgy. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and liturgy is error itself. But yeah. uh, and then uh, you know the fact that that uh, the Protestants were all Catholics. Yeah. Originally. Yeah. yeah. The original Protestants were Catholics, and they just left behind a little bit of the baggage that they were carrying, but they kept carrying most of it. Yeah. You know, they brought out the, the, the Sunday thing, yeah. you know. Mm. And a few years ago, we read that pagan Christianity book that you stock, and where they teach you about the, the steeples and the and even the pulpit and the sophists and the, yeah, the altars yeah. and the pulpits, and everybody's just gathered mm. facing up at a stage or... You don't see them sitting around yep. in a circle. Nobody's equal, you that's know. The, that's yeah. the old Roman way of worshipping their their deity. When they would go into these, sometimes caves, and they would have uh, two rows of seats, and they had a, a aisle down the middle, and then they had this slab up there that looked like an altar, that we would call an altar. Yeah. But it was like an autopsy yeah. table, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, that was because human sacrifice was going on, yeah. and they imitated their de their their deity was, well, M I T H R A S, and he was slaying the bull. You know, you see the pictures of him yeah. in, on the internet too. Mm. Yeah, so they they had these operations going on in there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, I had a and I thought it's an interesting subject, kind of ties into last week, but we didn't cover it. Um, I got a question on the YouTube yesterday, and I thought it could take us into an interesting topic. It says, because um, remember my stunned, humorous uh, reaction to the the birth con uh, the contraception thing about Onan. Um, so this, I don't know if it's a brother or a sister. They've said I did not hear anything in this video. This was the sex part. Right. I did not hear anything in this video concerning the birth control pill. <laughs> I am curious as to the opinions of fellow Nats room concerning such. Personally, I think it is not lawful due to it being a pharmaceutical item. I have learned that pharmakia, otherwise known as drug sorcery, is not lawful according to Torah, therefore, yeah. make, therefore making the birth control pill unlawful. I realize that this in combination with the use of birth control... Sorry, I realize that this is in... Con Oh, what does that say? Something about wasting a man's seed. Uh, making abstinence the only birth control. So, um, and I mean, just Amy and I, over the years, years ago, and when she was on the pill and things, she found it just played havoc with her body. And so we, we won't go near all that stuff now. It's just too, 
the, I th in my opinion, is the pill is really dangerous. It, it really plays havoc with a woman's body. Um, it actually damages a lot of women to where they can't become pregnant. And, uh, you know, it, it actually messes with them. But here's the deal. You're saying words, and, you ha and I'm one of those kind of people that analyzes words a lot. Mm -hmm. Birth control. Well, it's not about birth control. No. It's about impregnation control. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> Yeah. And impregnation control means that who's in control? You're trying to be in control, right? Yeah. That's where the error starts. So if you're trying to control yeah. what Yahuwah is in control of, yeah. then he, it's like Yahuwah is driving the bus, and you come up from the, out of the crowd of the bus and say, you're not going the right way here. <laughs> Let me just steer this for you. And yeah. you start having the steering wheel. Yeah. You just leave it up to Yahuwah, you know? Yeah. But uh, that's what we're really doing when we take impregnation control yeah. drugs and we try to limit mm. his authority over them. Yeah. And that's just yeah. like attacking the wound too. Yes. Because you're attacking the wound. Yeah. We found that such a, uh, a, a it shocked me at the, at the time because I didn't think my, I'd made up my mind, my mind about most of the sex things you talked about last week so they weren't a shock to me. But then when you hit the clanger with the, the uh, contraception one I thought wow that's amazing and we Amy and I talked about it afters and we just thought that is just wonderful you know to just let Yahusha you know if you got if you have more kids you have more kids so what you know he'll look after us you know because so many people and clients and some friends and that they, they want to let you know they want to make you feel like because we're young that it's really irresponsible to not plan your life and not have you know, houses and cars and lots of money behind you before you start having kids. And I know, you know, you've got to be kind of wise in your life, but um, we did it all, all back to front. We had nothing and kids just started coming. And I said to Amy in the beginning, I don't know how many kids you want to have. I don't mind. So let's just see what happens. Turns out we got five already. But I, uh, yeah. we'd had that discussion. Should we stop? Like, we're in control of it. And then... We had that discussion last week, and I thought, we're not wrong. We're not irresponsible. Like, we're, we've been irresponsible with money, but we're not wrong. Yahushua's blessed us with these children, and it's a wonderful thing. You know, we can rejoice in it. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah is uh, on record. I can't remember the text exactly where it's at, but that he looks after those with, with little ones. Yeah. And if he's looking after you, then... then you know, that's wonderful. That's all you need. Uh, the other thing, too, is other people, if they have their head put on right, when they hear of someone that has a lot of children, mm. they have a lot of respect for them, you know. Okay. Hadn't thought really, of that. <laughs> their heart hearts. I mean, there's no way that somebody's going to say, oh, well, that's irresponsible. Well, they could, yeah. but that would be a very selfish-minded person. Someone yeah. that's saying yeah. that their lives or if they put themselves in your position, mm -hmm. they would be just too busy and their life wouldn't be fun for them. And, yeah. you know, this isn't about it. It isn't about that. You're, you're investing yourselves in the lives of your children. And that's wonderful. I mean, if, I mean, we're all here because our parents nurtured us and cared for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we look back upon those with fond memories, most yeah. of us. Yeah. You know, have come from good homes, and and the break up the break up of the family, as we studied in the marriage uh, seminar, was uh, is disastrous to both uh, individuals, children, and to entire nations yeah. because the nation is mm -hmm. found the foundation of the nation is in the family. Yeah. And that's where uh, you know we need to keep our our focus. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Amy's had some concerns over the years when, whenever we've read that Matthew 24 scripture about uh, and when we hear all these other things that are happening and seeing in the world and the end is coming and she sees that scripture that says uh, woe to the uh, wo wo pray that your journey is not on the Sabbath and woe to those who have young Her children is that what it says? Yeah, yeah pregnant. nursing pregnant and nursing children yeah. what's your take on that? what does that mean? Well, that's saying what it really says is that uh, he's saying that it's going to be bad for those that have mm. nursing children and are, who are pregnant in mm. those days. Yeah. Now, I assume that he means for those that are 
not of the of the family because he's not pouring out wrath on his children. You see, yeah. he's pouring out wrath on those that have been mocking and scoffing, and resisted the Torah of Yahuwah. There's nothing but good coming for those who uh, meditate in the Torah of Yahuwah, like we read it in Psalm one just a uh, ago. So when we believe what he says, then and we obey him, then he's not going to pour out that wrath. That's that's wrath that's being poured out that he's describing. Okay. So he's not he's not going to be wrathful towards his own children. Mm. That's great. He's just he's judging the unrighteous. Mm. And he, in fact in Malachi he says that you will see a distinction mm. between the righteous and the unrighteous in the way that they're being uh, judged. Mm. Yeah, that's that's just amazing. Yeah, going back to the the pharmacia thing, uh, we've um, knocked the birth control pill out of the park. What about other pharma? Like uh, you know, if we're in the salon, I got a headache. Yeah, pop a Panadol. Do you have Panadol over there? You know, pop pop a Panadol. You know, you, you know. I don't know what that is. I don't, no. I don't. I'm familiar with all the medication. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's like something like if you get a headache, they, people say, oh, just take a Panadol. It's, it's just, oh, yeah. we call it uh, Tylenol. Or, yeah, take a Tylenol. Yeah, something like that. Is that I'm allergic to Tylenol. <laughs> so, sorry? I say I'm allergic to Tylenol. Oh, okay. Uh, I hardly ever get any headaches, but uh, mm. there are alternative means of having, you know, I'm not talking about acupuncture or anything like that, but here's, uh, in general, there's two ways of viewing Medicine, the world of medicine, and uh, or treatment of illness, mm -hmm. and the the one is called uh, homeopath, and they use natural herbs, the the leaves of the trees, and uh, ointments and salves and different things that are actually naturally occurring that they were actually created for, mm -hmm. and then there's the allopaths. So you've got homeopaths and you've got allopaths. Mm -hmm. Now the allopaths are the ones who use the same sorts of origins for things, but then they process them and patent them, and they really don't like the homeopaths because they can't patent and stop these people from using their herbs and vitamins and minerals and all the nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so homeopaths are the enemy of the allopaths. And so the allopaths formed an organization here in the United States called the American Medical Association in order to, to subdue these and that, the whole purpose of their existence, really, is to get rid of these homeopaths and mm -hmm. control everything from the seeds to the plants to the use of the plants as medicines. Mm -hmm. And if you label something and says that this does, if this product will help in the treatment of such and such, then the allopaths have the American Medical Association, uh, Association jump with the Federal Department of Agriculture, the FDA, and they stomp on these people, and they mm. shut them up, shut them down. Mm. And uh, it's really used as a hammer, yeah. you know, and, and everybody doesn't see it this way because the media doesn't reveal what's really happening, no. but that's what it is. It's a horrible uh, way of approaching this thing, and a lot of people actually are injured severely by these patented medicines, yeah. you know. So pharmacia, the quick fix, is really the wrong way to go. Yeah. But it isn't necessarily always wrong because, see, they have a wonderful array of antibiotics that are, you know, able to, they process those too, and they're able to fight disease. And a lot of people wouldn't want to use those either, but I personally see the benefits in it and a lot of rabbinical people do too although I'm not a you know a Talmudist you know mm -hmm. but these uh, these rabbis do uh, look at the kosher or not kosher aspects of things mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. seem to understand that uh, that's fine you know mm -hmm. that uh, you're you're not eating ham and you're not eating uh, pig stomachs and things like that mm -hmm. now we don't recommend that I mean you know eating cheeses that have mm -hmm. You know, rent it in it that uh, processes the cheese from pig stomachs, no. you know, or unkosher animals or anything like that. Mm. But uh, pharmacia uh, is in the scriptures can be good or bad because, see, pharmacia 
it was used in the worship of these demons, you know, satanic and, uh, well, you know, the, the false religions or the, you know, the pagans, in order to induce conditions where they could see into the other dimension and, and they would be able to perceive things. So they're taking psychoactive drugs and those are, that's the pharmacia that they're talking about. Now, wine and beer, alcohol, yeah. was used med medically and both topically uh, for disinfecting things. I don't know how they would even imagine how that happened, but the uh, the curing or the, 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 the when the Samaritan came to the aid of the Yahudi mm. that was injured on the road, he poured wine into his wounds in order for them to not fester because they had antibiotic, antibiotic properties, and uh, it would kill bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that was known about, too. And people, like even Paul, recommended that uh, Timothy take a little wine because he was nervous, and he was a little bit fearful being young, talking to people. Mm -hmm. So he said, settle yourself down, calm mm -hmm. yourself, relax. Have but he didn't, he didn't say, have a beer. <laughs> he, he wasn't saying... Uh, that that wine now to excess it is wrong. Like yeah. Noah had a, had gotten drunk mm. and passed out, and you know that was one of the problems that he had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The wine itself is not a problem. No. You know. Yeah. A lot of people try and say that the wine used by Yahushua and the wine at the Passover, they all try and say that it's just grape juice. It wasn't alcoholic or things like that. But I I think that's reading into it. I think that's a bit. Well, that's because of where the people are coming from, too. The people are coming out of a denomination of Christianity that was very severe, like uh, some of the Pentecostal uh, people and some of the Baptists. They have had this conditioning already. So they, they, when they come into more truth and they become not serene, they carry with them that same pattern. You know? But you have to be... Uh, you know, careful not, to, I mean, of course, not drinking anything is a problem either. No. If you don't drink wine at all, yeah. that's not a problem. But it is it is a, a problem if you're saying that it's a sin when it's not, because mm. you can't add or take away from the Torah. The yeah. instructions don't say anything, but be careful, much wine, you know, or mixing wines and drinking all night, you know. Yeah. But having a glass of wine with a meal, mm. you know, that's not a problem. You know? No, no. <laughs> yeah. I had a beer last night. Yeah. I, 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 got, I had one beer. Yeah. And, and it was very pleasant after I got home from work. Yeah. And uh, I had some uh, stir fry, you know, yeah. some beef, a pepper steak. Yeah. Beef stir fry. Yeah. And a beer. It really, it really tasted wonderful. Lovely. Lovely. Because I think you've mentioned talking about the pharmacare and, the, and alcohol and things. You've talked about. Uh, Smokes and uh, what was the other one? Somewhere I heard you talking about uh, smokes. Yeah, marijuana or something like that. Didn't you say that was uh, me what's the word? Well, Medication or something? Oh, it has been used uh, all through for thousands of years. Yes, it has been used. In fact, uh, there's a lot of Nazarene that see cannabis and cannab cannabinoids as ingredients that are in the incense that Yahuwah commanded them to make. Mm. And fragrance was the thing they were going for. I don't really think that he wanted us to inhale the smoke, like okay. deliberately, because okay. that see, our bodies aren't designed to inhale smoke. <laughs> yeah, come on. I mean, yeah. but there's a lot of people that are going to get mad at me for saying that. that yeah. That's that's just a fact. Yeah. But uh, and, and you know, I'm, if I sound like I'm condemning, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm yeah. not judging anybody. Yeah. You know. A lot of people think, well, no, you know, that's that's got to be cut and dry here. I, I smoke pot. And, uh, that evil know, Lou White won't let me respect. smoke pot. You know, I don't judge you. You <laughs> know, that's between you and Yahusha, I'm not yeah. involved. Yeah, just uh, like you were saying, your, your lungs aren't built for smoke, are they? No. 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 And uh, also, we're not built to go climbing up on the uh, outside of smokestacks. To inhale the smoke up there, but actually the real danger is is really climbing up there because we're not we can't fly. 
No. <laughs> you know, so if you put yourself in danger by going to high places yeah. and you're and you're just climbing rocks yeah. on the sides of cliffs, yeah. you know, then you know what you you, 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 <laughs> you know something wrong. You know, <laughs> what might happen here? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, down, down in Australia, yeah. I heard that you guys, as a nation, which uh, I think your population is about the same as one state that we have, California. Okay. Um, what is it? What is the population there? Twenty <laughs> something million. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. yeah. So you guys. <laughs> That's consume, the other thing about us Aussies. We don't care. <laughs> but you guys consume enough yeah. beer to fill the Arecibo telescope. Really. Yeah, that thing is huge. You've got to be good at yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody's trying to, you know, get high, aren't they? The, I, I was telling one of my staff the other day that Satan is has a counterfeit. I talked to her a few, about lots of things like this, and I say, well, when you're full of Yahushua's love, it's uh, it just feels wonderful at times. It's not always, you know, drunkenly high, but sometimes it is. And I said... Uh, Satan is an identity thief. He wants to, to throw all the young people into sex and drugs and alcohol and draw them away and get them to jump out of planes and, you know, trying to get their adrenaline, you know, by doing crazy things. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Mm. And, uh, you know, when you're guided by Yahushua mm. in every thought, you know, then there's not going to be deeds that produce bad fruit. No. You know, and you, mm. but then again, when we look at other people, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to make a determination about that. And uh, you know, that's what people do all the time. You know, yeah. you know, because they they're programmed that way. Mm. Uh, oh, that's not done. You know, and when people use bad language or they uh, mm. break laws, either Yahuas or Civil laws, mm. then it's it's just something that we see all the time. It's commonplace, mm. but we uh, we still don't judge them, you know. No. But we guide them and we try to invite them to have Yahushua live inside them mm. if they just submit to His authority. Yeah. And it, it it's really uh, hard to explain to a person that's completely clueless. But uh, mm. you know, you have to use the right words at the right time. If you're even used to do it, you might not be the one that convinces them, but you can plant seeds. And then as mm. those seeds are planted, you don't know what seeds are already planted in them. And then you come along and water them. And then somebody else, a little later, maybe weeks later, waters it a little more. And Yahuwah gives it the growth. Mm. And then suddenly there's a new believer, a new brother and sister. And uh, we might not hear of this. But uh, the important thing is that we're to speak what we're given to give them. You know, not too much at once. But uh, yeah. a lot of people have a, a lot of zeal when they first come into a little knowledge. Yeah. And then they're just pounding people with all the knowledge that they can. They pour it all on them. Yeah. And I was the same way. I thought, well, let me just give you this whole thing real right now in a five-minute spiel. Yeah. And that's just too much. Yeah. You know. <laughs> It's like too much fertilizer. <laughs> You're going to kill this. <laughs> Drown the plant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Another question uh, we had through on the Facebook page this week uh, was, because uh, we've been talking about uh, having Yahushua in you the last few weeks uh, and um, the flogging. I, I, we, we use the analogy of the flogging from Hebrews 12. Your conscience, yes. Yeah. Uh, this this person has said, how do you really know if Yahushua is speaking to you and how to listen out for him? And also, what are the symptoms of him flogging you and correcting you? How do you know if it's Yahushua speaking to you or if it's yourself or if it's a demon? How would you explain that to somebody? Because we hear millions of thoughts in a day, don't we? Well, yeah. What you do is you compare it with the word of Yahuwah. It's the Torah of Yahuwah. If you are looking for an answer you, and you can't find it, then you should go to someone that's an elder, someone just is older than you in the faith, that has walked with him longer, and then ask them and say, well, can you give me evidence of whether this is the right thing or the wrong thing? So what we're talking about is binding and loosing. 
permitting and forbidding. So if something is to be bound, then it's forbidden. Mm. If it's loose, then it's permitted. Mm. So what we're really talking about there is, and, so, and that's what Paul was talking about when he was referring to some who are weak mm. in the faith, mm. are uh, they don't permit themselves to, to eat meat at all. Yeah. Uh, because they're afraid of everything. <clears throat> yeah. They don't offend you. Mm. And so when you do something in front of them, because mm. you have the freedom to do it, because you are permitted to do it, or that is loosed mm. by Torah, then he would recommend that you not do it in their presence because it might offend them mm. and cause them to stumble. Yeah. And then that's that's a problem too. So, But as they become stronger in the faith, then they will no longer be so weak that they are affected by what everybody else is doing around them. Um, but we are to go and become hermits or monks mm. and hide away from the world. Because, see, our work is in this dirty place mm. called the field. You know, mm. the field of Yahuwah is the whole world. Mm. And we're planting seeds in dirt, and that's the hearts of other men mm. and women. And uh, we're going to get our, our hands and our feet dirty mm. as we do that. In fact, Paul said, again, that uh, he became as, or he was disguised, as being someone without Torah, although not really committing sin himself, but he was having to be around them and infiltrate them in order to be that some might be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the thing that made me realize where I was, and I didn't uh, run away from it because if I did, then I wouldn't be able to reach the people. Is he so, the one? Is he the one that said, "Be all things to all men." To, yes, in order to win a soul, right? He became all. He became as any, whoever he was around. Mm. He was around people who who kept the Torah, and he and he behaved a certain way there, yeah. meaning that he appeared to be uh, obeying the Torah, and he was. He obeyed the Torah. Mm. He obeyed the Torah mm. from his heart, mm. and uh, at all times, even when he was around people who were without Torah, he still kept Torah. Yeah. But did not necessarily open his mouth to everyone around him, but specific people, mm. like that case in, in point where I had those three girls last yeah. week yeah. that came in, and I opened my mouth and I told them about Deuteronomy or Devarim chapter 18, mm. and uh, that this is a, making them an enemy if they use divination, yeah. an enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one was there. Now, she could be the one that's getting saved, uh, that, gets, that comes to the Torah eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw a difference in the three girls. Mm. But uh, that's what we look for. Mm. See, that, that's who we're looking for. We're looking for the lost. We're, we're hunters, and we're searching in the, in the crags and the rocks and the holes, and we're digging them out of those holes mm. and saying, come with us. Yeah. You're going to perish if you stay here. Yeah. Because when Yahushua said, unless you repent, mm -hmm. you will perish, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, he was talking to people who were in religion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The um, other part of her question said, "How? what are the symptoms of him flogging you and correcting you? I sort of, for me, it's like I've interpreted more of, uh, as you go on, a, a clear conscience is a very precious thing to have for me. Um, you know, coming out of the sins and hang-ups that I came out of, like if the first thing I wake up in the morning and the first thing that comes to my head is a, a rerun of things I'd done the day before or the night before, or like your conscience, you just you just feel like, you know, and so... You know, I'd bounce things off my wife and you confess your sins one to another and you get out of it. But the pain that you feel inside, I think you've got to, our, our naturopath said you've got to get to the point where you, you feel that, uh, where you associate junk food and bad food with pain. And as a young person, I've changed subject, but as a young person, you don't associate anything with pain because you're, you know, you, you can do anything, you're invincible. Whereas you start to get a little bit older and you, you start to put on a bit of weight and you sort of think, yeah, well, junk food is giving me pain. You might, you might get a bit of a bad back or you're working and you've got kids and you think, that, that food that I've ate, ate and has given me pain. 
you know. So the sin that I have done is causing me pain inside. Um, so to me, a clear conscience, that's how I I associate with what are the symptoms, pain. Pain. A, a guilty conscience is pain to me. I don't, yeah, I don't want to... You're using the word conscience perfectly correctly there. That's where the flogging or the pain uh, really comes from, is whether you're going in the right direction or not. Because, you know, the, the pain and pleasure that we are built with, if, they're, they're, if something is hot, we, we stay away from it. Yeah. If something's too cold, we stay away from it. Mm. If something's sharp, it might cut us, we stay away from it. So we, we are always trained in our physical to stay away from things that are harmful. And we also have a conscience that will keep us away from uh, tending towards a pattern in the wrong ways too, you know, like evil thoughts and uh, improper diet. It could be a lot of things, but too much of a good thing can be harmful. Yeah. But the conscience is the thing that is, is the dividing point where you have to go one way or the other in your heart, in your mind, to decide whether it's something Yahushua wants. But, you know, that's ultimately going to lead us to the ability for Yahushua to be in control of us. Because that's who we're really arguing with in our conscience. Is yeah. He's pressuring us to go a certain way, and we're, say, and we're resisting Him in our conscience. Yeah. And we're saying, no, I don't want you to have control over that area. Mm. Let me have control over this. Mm. And you know it. You mm. feel His, his mind. Yeah tending towards a, a certain way, but you say, no, I want this gratification right now, mm. and it, it might be anything, yeah. but you do it anyway. Uh, patience with other people sometimes. Uh, if that it can, feels good, do it. <laughs> That's what they say in uh, the world. We're mm. impatient in our conscience as yes. well as in our, mm. in our hearts and minds. Mm. We, we don't stop to think before we speak, no. and that's where a lot of our problems are because mm. the tongue... And the keyboard on a, t on a computer mm. contains the power of life and yeah. death. Yeah. When people attack me, for example, mm. they're also attacking my wife and my children and my grandchildren. Yes. And if you saw yeah. all of those faces that you were really attacking, mm. then you'd say, wait a minute, these people are innocent. I hate this guy, but I don't really have any feeling against these other people. But you're still attacking them. Yeah. And uh, that's the sad thing. If people don't take it into consideration, mm. but uh, we have to look at each person as a as more than that because it's a whole family when you're represent like you're the head of a family, mm. Mm. as am I. Yeah. Do you think uh, that everybody has uh, a conscience? I know everybody's got a conscience, but do you think everybody's? Because some people are brought up, you know, if somebody who was maybe brought up in a same-sex marriage, or somebody who was born uh, into a single parent, marriage, uh, family, or they're brought up with different levels of uh, values and beliefs. And do you think that means that their conscience is different? Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's wired completely differently. But the same principles will apply in every person if they can when they're get down to the basic rudiments of their foundation, which is what you who have created. Mm -hmm. All the other things are just miswired things. It's like an alarm system. It's, yeah. it's just messed up, you know. Uh, for example, when a Christian stands under the authority of a, of a preacher that keeps telling him that it's okay to eat pigs because, let's go to Mark 7, and he said whatever goes into your body uh, is what defiles you, and besides we have refrigeration now, they didn't have that then. As long as you say grace. <laughs> and if you say that, yeah. If you're blessing the food, well, yeah. you're blessing the one that gave you the food. Yeah. You know, the food's not changing. Yeah. Anyway, the thing that is, though, mm. uh, he was, uh, you know, not, uh, it, when you're under that kind of programming, yeah. then you're getting your conscience wired by somebody that's teaching you false doctrines, mm. and therefore mm. you don't hear the alarm going off when you see somebody handing you a ham sandwich. Yeah. You don't hear the alarm yeah. because you're programmed in the wrong way. Mm. And that's true mm. of these other situations that you were describing too. Yeah. Mm. You know, so we have to inform them of the covenant and the Torah yeah. and what Yahuwah, you know, we have to search diligently what we, what Paul also said, we have mm. to find out what we have to do to please Yahuwah. Mm. So we, in order to do that, we've got to look at what he told us, how, how to live. Mm. 
And uh, that's the process that we have to inform them of. Mm. A lot of people, Little. yeah, a lot of people don't want to talk about uh, checking your thoughts, do they? And that's scripture, that's Torah. Uh, arrest every thought and check it with the word to see if it's me talking to you or, you know, you're being led yeah, astray. Make every thought subordinate to Yahushua's thoughts. Yeah. Which written down for you, all you have to do is just check. Yeah. And what's, what's an abomination to him mm. uh, a thousand or two thousand years ago is an abomination now. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he said, and he, I think it's Yeshiyahu or Isaiah mm. chapter 66, where he talks about the uh, people who set themselves apart to go into the farms. Mm. They, they, call, they call it the word gardens. Mm. And they permit themselves to eat swine and, and, mm. and you know, rats and, you know, anything that they want. Yeah. And he yeah. says that he says that he's going to bring it into them. Mm. You know, so, and that's, of course, in his day of judgment. Mm. Because the day of judgment of this earth is going to be uh, just unbelievable, you know. Yeah. And uh, those that are protected will be easily seen. Why isn't this happening to you? Well, it's because I'm a Torah keeper. I love his Torah. And mm. I've been following his instructions and he's protecting me. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm. from what's happening. Radiation, explosions, waves. Mm. There'll be mile high waves coming off the oceans. Yeah. You know, washing mm. and, and there'll be things falling out of the sky. Mm. You know, 100 pound rocks, mm. asteroids and things, you know, just coming right in. Uh, meteors. So when you said last week you wouldn't want to live near the ocean because of obviously what's happening with the sea level and possible tsunamis, how do you escape things falling out of the sky? <laughs> well, we're in either case, we're going to be okay. Okay. But, uh, uh, we have brothers and sisters that are living right in the crater of the of the Yellowstone supervolcano, and they'll be okay too. Yeah. But you know, Yahoo will either move them. Or he'll protect them where they are, mm. you know. Even though the people that are around, because it says in the Psalms, I think it's Psalm ninety-one. You know, if you read Psalm ninety-one, mm. it says that it's at your right hand, a thousand will perish at your right, mm. but it will not come near you. Mm. And uh, it's happening right before your eyes, mm. but it's not harming you in the least. Mm. And uh, death stalks in the night, disease, whatever. There's not going to be any harm coming to those that love you. Yeah. So, because he says at the end of the psalm, because we know his name yes. and we call upon his name. Yeah. Well, amazing. <laughs> What's she saying? It's been an hour. It's her telephone. She says it's been one hour already. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Back in that day. Come yeah. on, come on, sister. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to get uh, sailing down the road here, I guess. Lovely to see you again, brother. Same here. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for taking time to do this for all these wonderful people out here. Yeah, it's wonderful. You know. thank, thank you, brothers and sisters. We love you. Keep studying, keep learning, keep walking with your Husha. Yeah. Bye-bye. Love you, mate. Yeah, Love you. you.